to act as a bridge between science and policy. And that's what um, it should be developing and, 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 and becoming more efficient and better at doing all the time. But there are other, in Mexico, the national, the, the muse, the national collections, the museum, uh, the, the collections in the Instituto de Biología, in the Institute of Biology, they do what they do and they, they may be, they can be better doing it, but what they are doing is research and science. They don't care much about the policy. There is a bridging institution that links what they do with the government uh, activities, and that's Conavio. Uh, Jorge, this is Chris again. So I have a question for you, because, and it's, it's a great segue from what you just said. As part of my presentation, I bemoaned the lack of these kinds of bridging institutions at universities and specifically at the University of Kansas. We're great at doing biodiversity research, we're great at doing modeling and so forth, but there is no bridging institution at the university that either translates the results of our research for decision makers, policy makers, legislators so that they can understand it, or to translate it to administrators so they can understand the importance of what we are doing, and certainly to, we don't have that kind of institution to train our students not only in evolutionary biology and biodiversity informatics, but to train them in themselves knowing what does it really mean for the future and how do you best communicate it uh, uh, to different audiences wearing different hats and using different language as you uh, so aptly put it in, in one of your films yesterday or, or the day before. So should a university have one of these bridging institutions? And if not, uh, what kinds of bridging institutions could universities collaborate with to get this message across and get this function accomplished? Well, I, I think this is a very good question. And Chris, you yourself, uh, you, I, I have heard you uh, and, um, answering it in the past. Some universities, and unfortunately I think KU is one of them, don't see the importance and the academic value of this bridging process. This is an interesting process in itself, worthy of being studied and analyzed, and, 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 and you can publish about these processes. You can do research about the process itself. So for sure, I think a university can, and there are many that have, that kind of linking and bridging um, function. Um, perhaps our university is less um, enlightened about the importance of this function and its uh, value academically, not just a, as a bridging itself, but academically. I, I, I built half of my career as, 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 as an, in, in, in a university on what I learned on, or what I did at Cornavio as a bureaucrat, because there are many interesting things that can be analyzed and researched in the process itself. So I think, yes, of course, a university can do it. And in fact, I think universities are uh, very well uh, posed to do that if they know how to do it. Uh, it's, it's just a pity that ours don't do it, but uh, ask MIT, ask uh, Stanford, ask, ask uh, Harvard. There are plenty of, of bridging institutions in those universities. All the time they do it. Uh, we don't, I don't know why. Maybe because narrow-mindedness, narrow I don't know. So if the university can't do it, or won't do it, or doesn't do it, who can or with whom can we collaborate to do that? Um, There's an probably, NGO. I don't know, but I would like to, to know what uh, Van der Ley say about this or Sam Lee, but probably uh, with some government agency, federal government, beginning with the local agencies, uh, but the federal agencies that are in need of the data and know how that the university has. Uh, so, Fish and Wildlife Service in the US, the Park Service. So I'm, um, I'm going to present an opposing viewpoint. 
The university is there to advance knowledge. And at least I personally am playing this game because I'm interested in the evolution, biogeography, and ecology. Notice that ecology is in third place, Jorge, of <laughs> life. And I don't often care about whether I am influencing policy, which is to say I'm not going to go out there and knock on doors in Washington, D.C. I interface with policy people in large part because sometimes they can pay for the research that I want to do. Now maybe that's just selfish, or maybe that's sticking well, your head in the sand, but w aren't universities... Let me say the something there, uh, down. Uh-huh. Aren't, aren't universities the place where the basic research can be done? We've just said that Conabio doesn't do the basic research. It's a flow-through. Yeah. And we've just, before we called you, we were just saying that many of these institutions should stay, stay small and light and agile. And having a cre creative researcher who may go off in a corner and do nothing useful for 10 years, but then emerge with something pretty exciting, is a luxury that, you know, Bunderley just told us, Kriya can't afford. No. Or maybe even doesn't want. So, well, so it, why do universities have to speak to the policy realm? That's why we asked the second well, question. Well, they don't, I don't have to if they don't want to. I, I think this is a collective thing uh, and that uh, it's done with different people doing different things. You are a researcher and your role is as a scientist. But it is conceivable to have a, a, a unit or an agency inside the university which does the other thing, the other part. That's, that's why they're called bridging institutions because they would be able to, working with you, make sense of your science from the perspective of the other people which are the, the government people and then spend the time because this is something that I have said several times in my little videos and I will repeat it again nothing changes unless you spend the stupid amount of time that is required to go to, to congressional meetings to speak with advisors to explain one time and another and again and again and again and then they change the advisor and you have to begin again and then they change the 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 the, the, the representative because there were elections and there is a new one and then you have to start again and this is my experience the one thing i learned and i didn't realize on like it was over is that i spent most of the time just pursuing the thing a researcher is not supposed to do that, it would be a total waste of the time of, of that person. She is not supposed to spend the time talking with, with congresspersons, perhaps one or two times, but not all the time. Whereas the institution may do that. There may be a role for that activity. So that's why they are called bridging institutions. There is you doing science down, which you know that it's really it's important because say you are working with malaria, right? Do you work with malaria? I got a feeling that you did. Okay. Um, okay. You work with malaria. You know that what you do, it's going to be it's bound to be useful, but it's not your role. Spend ninety percent of your time talking to the WHO authorities. Somebody else should do that. Uh, and that's, that's what makes the thing institutional. It's not a task for one person. It's a collective. And some people do something and others do other things. Okay, comment from Vanderlei and then a comment from Lucy. At long last. Um, regarding uh, Jorge, regarding your comments on uh, on uh, the possibility of 
cria doing this type of thing. Uh, first, I think it's really important uh, to do uh, this analysis uh, to support policy making, to transform this uh, type of information in educational material. But the thing is, um, basically, the work that we are doing in CREA, if we do not do, nobody, will, nobody else will do that in Brazil. So in my view, I think it's, it's better that we continue to do what we are doing, more and better. And then we develop like strategic alliances with other groups that would do that. And so we would be very happy to provide all the support and to share all the tools. But I think, um, you know, we are working in a niche that if we do not do, nobody else will do. And so I think we have like to, to continue to look uh, for those strategic alliances. And so, for example, now we are exploring to do work with uh, uh, Phil Cruz, uh, that's, uh, you know, like the, 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 the federal institution that uh, does all the epidemiological monitoring. So uh, I think we, we are working with them such that they can use the data, but uh, I think there's a lot of uh, need for capacity building. So I think, um, like uh, what Kansas is doing, working with all other groups uh, all over the world, like in, in building capacity to make a good use all of the, the information infrastructure, of the data, the tools, and the services, I think that's the way to go. But I, I agree with you, all you guys. We need uh, these other groups that will do like the translation of all this information to support policy making and also other uh, societal benefits. Hello, Jorge, Lucy here. Yes, Lucy. They were trying to keep me from talking, but I managed to get in. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're listening to you know, the great advice and great experience from everyone here and trying, I'm trying to think as I write on my notebook, we have a chance for the countries that don't yet have such setups and networks to go back home and say, this is what we need to start, for example. Maybe that's what Alex was alluding to. And um, it seems to me as a for most of us in the developing world, we don't have the luxury to, or we don't need to take 13 years to do what Vandalay or yourself have done or 20 years to make the mistakes. We're hoping we can leapfrog to some extent, learn from your mistakes, learn from what has worked. And because we're in countries that have a consortium of everything, our countries have universities, our countries have herbariums, our countries have state agencies, our countries have academicians, they're all there. And as we learned earlier today, we want to work with the data that's available, we want to work with the initiatives that exist, we want to uh, build on projects that are ongoing and build on institutions that are already doing something useful. Is, I'm not looking for a silver bullet, but are there some key things that get us there faster? For example, I'm thinking of Kenya and trying to think, what is it that would make that institution succeed faster through some of those initial hopes? And perhaps one of the things we have not been good at asking is, what is the question we want to answer? Because if we knew as a country, what's a critical question for which we may have data that we can answer, then we would get the year of the policymaker because we are answering something they're struggling with, and we have information that can contribute to that issue. But I think we are challenged in having the right questions. This is what I feel, in having the right questions to which we need to apply our effort and our information and our institutions. And you've worked in that policy domain for a while. Is there strategies that make sense in how best to get to those key questions? Is it sitting in round tables often with a lot of those policy makers and hearing what they're struggling with and trying to formulate a value proposition that you know you can deliver? Or is it sitting back to what you have and trying to see what can I do with what I have and is there a question it can answer? I'm trying to think how best to, you know, the informatics institution I think is 
is is uh, clear why it's necessary how best do we make it relevant faster maybe that's what i'm asking and how best do we get to where conabio got to in getting the government to require information from them where Korea is at now where sanbi is at now if we are on a flat plane where we could go any direction right now i'm thinking of ghana and benin and drc and kenya i don't know if i have a clear question but i'm trying to see how best i can leapfrog using your experiences to get to the right questions to which i can then apply my effort to provide some products limited products that are visible that are relevant yeah uh, I think nobody can answer that question from outside the, the country in, in question. Uh, but I can tell you something. There are some institutions that have already gone through the pains of committing a lot of mistakes. Um, and, and, and you can use the experience of those to avoid the, 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 the major problems. So I, I cannot give you the answer about how to leapfrog the process in Kenya. But what I can tell you is that you can always ask um, questions from Minbio or from Conabio or from uh, Atri or from Korea uh, regarding different aspects of the process. And you will find people there with, uh, with experience and with some solutions that worked in that particular country. Uh, the, 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 the actual work has to be done in Kenya or in, or in, or in Ghana. Uh, you will have to find what is the right agency of what ministry is there now, right now, the, the, the right person that you can speak to and, 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 and seize the opportunity or you better wait. Uh, is there a big grant coming from a country? I don't know. It, it's really, uh, there is no answer, it, it, uh, no single answer. It all depends on the circumstances of the country. Mexico was very fortunate to have a president looking for a nice um, activity or something to show up in an international meeting, together with a dean of a university that had the right proposal. And the two things happened in the right, with the right timing. So uh, it was a to a certain degree, a matter of luck, uh, and being able to seize the chance, take the opportunity, go ahead uh, and, and do something now that we have a window. And if you can survive that window and create the institution, then you are in a better, in a better shape and you will be able to navigate more difficult waters later. But there is no answer to, I can't give you an answer, perhaps, Van der Leij have, may have some opinion or Kristalka about what, how do you leapfrog things and don't commit all the, or spend all the time that the, the institutions have spent, the older ones. So Fatima is waiting very politely to ask you a question or to make a comment. Kristalka is standing here next to me very impolitely <laughs> saying that he does have an answer. So it's I'm going to be I'm going to be even more impolite because I've got the microphone. I think there are a couple partial answers to Lucy's question. One is certainly what are the big global questions. What are, the, what are the treaties or agreements that governments are signing on to? So, you know, we're on the climate change wave right now. The next one might easily be desertification, especially in, in East Africa. A second thing, kind of the second half of my answer, jumping in front of Kristalka, who jumped in front of Fatima, um, the second one is what are the crises in your country right now? And being able to speak powerfully to those is pretty exciting. So, you know, I, I know a couple. For example, for example, dengue right now is oozing into eastern Kenya. And it appears that it's coming in via uh, refugees from Somalia, but curiously, 
it's really Dengue's first big entree in recent memory into, into Kenya. And if one could step up to the plate with a really nice synthetic view of what dengue vectors are going to do tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, etc., 